Hello and yes, welcome back to another video guys. Now today we're back to do my end of the month video. So this is going to be for June 2023. So for those of you who haven't seen one of these videos before from me, I basically recap every movie from the last month that I watched for the first time. I don't do re-watches here or TV shows, these are just first time watches for me. And it hasn't been my busiest month, but I've still seen 26 new movies i do normally get to like 35 so i've been a little bit shorter this month but still a lot of movies to go over um now before we get started if you guys can tell if i sound out of breath or something um i'm not sure what's entirely happened to me but last weekend i think i pulled a muscle up here in my chest and it's incredibly painful this ain't a sob story or anything this is me just saying it hurts a lot and it, it it's if it sounds like i'm out of breath that's that's why um but anyway we're going to crack on now. I'm going to sit over here so you can see the lovely movie posters. And this might be a bit of a long video, guys. So don't forget to go grab yourself a drink as well. Cheers. And we'll crack on. The first film up I saw was Licorice Pizza. This is a film which I've been meaning to watch for some time. I missed it at the cinema when it came out annoyingly. And it seemed like a type of film I'd love. Great director, really good cast as well. Uh, there were many reasons why I wanted to watch this one. And for some reason, just never got round to it. Every time I saw it in HMV or anywhere out and about, I never picked it up for some reason. Um, I, there was just always other things. But it went on Prime for free, so I thought, <laughs> let's give this a watch. Let's give it a go. So I did that, and um, I had a very good time with it. It's not my favourite film from this director, but I still had a very enjoyable enough time with it. Um, I really like the character work and the character studies between the main girl and the the um um younger guy in it i thought their chemistry was really good um there was some really fun bits one of my favorite bits was when they were basically in a lorry and they were trying to drive away from somewhere i didn't want to do it without spoiling it um but yeah this film was great i love the setting i love the vibe the movie had with the the music especially some really great music played throughout some of the cinematography was gorgeous it was a bit long in places, a little bit dragged out, but I had a very fun time with this one. I'm going to give it a 7.5 out of 10. Then, next up, we have the new Apple Plus film starring Sydney Sweeney, Reality. Um, I really didn't have too much interest in this one, and I think one of the things which really drew me to this was the fact that I, I heard it was based off a true story last minute. And I was like, oh, that always intrigues me more. And it's a story I knew nothing about. So, when this started up, it was like... You know, it's this very interesting premise, and I love the way it's decided to tell this story. It is all from her point of view. She just turns up at home after doing some grocery shopping, and then boom, police, uh, the CIA, under you know these special um, cops are at her door, going, "We need to make sure that you know there's no one else in the house. We need to do a search of the house. We can't tell you what's up just yet. We need to do this." And you know, it's like, do you trust these people? What's going on here? And then it just unveils of like, did she do what they're accusing or what even are they accusing her of? And I think that that was so interesting. And that really comes down to the way that this they decided to film this movie and tell this story. That it all feels like it's it's just been told in such an interesting and unique way from start to finish. Your attention is constantly there because you are um desperate almost to find out what happened next and it comes through some really great performances sydney sweeney gives maybe the best performance of her career so far i think even though don't get me wrong she's brilliant in euphoria um and i really like some of the editing choices and the stylistic um approaches it has when it tries to give what basically when you find something out it does this thing with the editing and it's really cool really clever um and it's actually one of the best films this year so far um, I'm going to give this film an 8 out of 10. It was really quite good. Then we have Carry On Teacher, the only Carry On film I watched this month. And I'm going to be really quick with this one, to be honest, guys, because I don't have loads to say on it. Um, Carry On Teacher, it's probably the weakest Carry On film I've seen so far. It's only the third one. I Well, actually, I watched one last night, funny enough. So I've seen four now. But, um, you know, that will be on next month's video. Um, yeah, it's 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 the third one I've seen at this point, weakest one. It, I didn't really get many laughs out of it. It was just the least interesting to me. I thought for a, a school setting, um, there wasn't many interactions between teachers and kids, which just felt a bit weird for me. There was a lot of funny things they probably could have come up with there if they maybe had the kids playing more pranks on them or something. But they didn't go that route. And honestly, I think it was a very boring approach on what could have been an interesting comedy um but it was okay it was fine i'll give it a five out of ten 
Then we have Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse. I'm going to be really quick because I've reviewed this in detail and talked about it in my favourite films of the year so far list. Um, this film's brilliant. It's, I, I, I want to say, like, it's it's one of the best films we've had of the last 10 years. Um, I, I would say it's, like, my favourite film since the last Spider-Verse film, but Everything Everywhere came out last year, and I kind of love that movie a little bit more. Uh, but I honestly have no problems with this film. I think this film's perfect. I think it's incredible. The, the animation for a star is flawless, and I love that how when you go to different uh, Spider-Verses, the animation style changes. The characters are brilliant, the, the returning ones and the new additions. And the story is clever and unique, and it never feels like it drags or it's going too fast. And the action sequences are brilliant. The cliffhanger's great, but my favourite moments are the emotional beats between Miles and his parents, and then Miles and Gwen. Some incredible stuff there, and I love Peter B. Parker. Um, <laughs> he's really funny. Um, 10 out of 10. I think this film is pretty brilliant, to be honest. Um, then we got Legend, starring Tom Hardy and Tom Hardy. Um, <laughs> I've seen so many memes of this movie. I feel like, it, I, I just sort of felt like I had to watch it. And I didn't love it as much as I wanted to. And Tom Hardy's so weird. I can't quite tell whether I love his performance or not. This one balances on the edge of when he plays Alfie in Peaky Blinders, which is great. And then his performance in Capone, which was terrible. This film sort of floats somewhere in the middle. And it's like it leans towards one or the other in terms of quality. And I didn't quite know what to make of it. Um, but yeah, it's 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 a hard movie. I, I, I always struggle more with films where you hate the characters or there's not really much to relate to them with. And of course, with this character, there isn't much. But it's a very interesting tale, you know, you know, loosely based on true events. Um, and I like a lot of the side characters. And the film does a good job at making you feel sorry for the side characters and showing you what a nasty pair these two were back in the day. Um, but as a film itself, it was OK. I don't think it's one I'll ever rewatch. Um, I'll give this film a six and a half out of ten. Then we've got The Covenant, um, which, of course, is Guy Ritchie's new movie. I knew he had another one out this year. I had no idea it was this soon. I had no idea it was going straight to Prime. Um, but, you know, I saw it pop up and I saw Jake Gyllenhaal. I was like, wow, whoop de doo let's give it a go. Um, I love Jake Gyllenhaal. I love Guy Ritchie. This should be great. And Guy Ritchie's had a couple new films since The Gentleman, which is a shame. So I love The Gentleman. And this is definitely his best film since. I still have a few problems with it. And at the start of this movie, I was really struggling with it. I was like, this kind of feels like generic um, Guy Ritchie stuff again. And then something happens halfway through and Jake Gyllenhaal um, goes on this massive mission, uh, this massive undertaking. And you feel like he's doing it all on his own um, with everyone, everything working against him. And that's when the movie really picked up for me. The back half of the film was so much more interesting. And I was genuinely, you genuinely just really root for this guy because he's on his own. And it's 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 a fascinating watch. And again, I don't think any of that would have worked as well without um, Jay Gyllenhaal's um, performance in this film. Um, but yeah, I think it's a really solid film. I just think it could have been a bit shorter. That first act could have been tidied up a lot more and just made a lot more interesting um, through, you know, its visuals, its editing style, everything. It felt very kind of bland, to be honest. But then, as I say, the back half of the movie really did pull it back for me. And it became a very interesting movie. And it's Guy Ritchie's best film since The Gentleman, I'd say. Um, but still a ways off that. Um, hopefully, we will get back there with Guy Ritchie. Um, but I'm going to give it a seven. I thought it was a very solid film. Uh, but it's it stuck with me well. I'll say that. And then we got another one. Uh, we got a couple in a row here. I don't have a lot to say on, to be honest. We got Blockhead, um, of course, a Lauren Hardy movie. Which um, I really enjoyed, to be honest. I did have a good time with this one. Um, there's a lot of good comedy in this one. Um, Laurel um, absolutely kills me. His facial expressions and the way he reacts to things that Hardy and other characters in this are saying. But in terms of, you know, settings and what the characters are doing, um, it's one of their more lesser interesting ones, to be honest. You know, we've had things like Way Out West, where, you know, they're, they're in the Westerns and stuff. There's another Laurel and Hardy film we're going to talk about in a bit. Or again, it's got a more interesting set. And I just found this one a bit like, yeah, this is okay. There's not loads to do here. And I think the movie knew that. There wasn't loads to do. But, of course, their comedic genius um, very much pushed this movie on. And it gave some very interesting moments. Um, but I'm going to give this film a 6 out of 10. It was good. It was fine. They've done better. Then we have Shafts, the original. Um, this has quite a high score on Letterboxd. And I was really surprised to find that I thought it was 
just good. Like, I, I, I don't know what it was. I just didn't really care for what was going on. I didn't connect with the story much. I thought the lead character was a bit dull. All the side characters were also a bit dull. And the, the, the plot itself, it, it just didn't have much drive to it. It got to the end and I just felt like, okay, that's that movie done. I just didn't really care much for what was going on. Now, I know there's remakes and I hear that the remake's actually not too bad. I think Sam Jackson's in it. But yeah, the original Shaft didn't do much for me. Um, I can acknowledge it was an okay film, no, um, and, you know, I didn't dislike it by any means. Um, so I'll give it a 6 out of 10. But yeah, I definitely in the minority didn't love this movie. Then we have Freaky. Um, this film's been on my Netflix watch list for so long, and I, I was going through Netflix, and I just thought, yeah, let's get let's get this one done. And it's on there because of Vince Form. I like Vince Form. I think he's funny. I think he's a good actor as well. You know, Dragged Across Concrete, Hacksaw Ridge. The man can act. He's good. And his comedic stuff's really interesting as well. And I, I didn't really know what this film was about, but I watched it, and it's called cool stars um, Catherine Newton as well, and um, those two do the classic body switch but they put a cool twist on it not only is it like a grown man and a teenage girl so there's some interesting stuff they can do there one's just a normal person and the other one's a murderer and it actually made for some very interesting moments while i still thought the film was kind of bad um i said it vince form was kind of funny you know it's some moments and reactions to things where you know he's being over the top and like giving hand gestures that like a teenage girl would give and it was just funny seeing him do that but the whole murder aspect, they could have done so much more with it. It didn't really make much sense to me. It just, like, that this person was just literally a psychopath. It's like, there's no real reason for this person just to now go do all these things. They don't seem to care that their body switched. It's like, yeah, they're going to just still carry on killing people. And then the ending of the film went balls to the wall and it went a bit too crazy. Um, and there was, like, three endings to the movie, which I didn't really care for either. It wasn't a very good film, to be honest, but it had a couple fun moments to it. It was stupid, dumb, popcorn flicky stuff. And, you know, some people are going to enjoy this. Um, I'll give it a four and a half out of ten. It was it was it was OK. Um, then we've got Sisu, which I went to see at the cinema. And I, I you know, what? again, this film here really dumb, but it's so much fun. Um, this main character, I don't think he speaks once in the movie man on his horse with his dog and he's just a ruthless killer and he's killing nazi german soldiers and it's great um i love the setting for a start it's in you know i think it's set in france most of this i think um i could be wrong and it's just the the wasteland part of the war where it's just you know it's been desecrated there's nothing left um and it's fantastically well shot through the lighting and all the, the, the sets themselves with all the smoke and the trench and all the thick mud it's great it's gritty and it's horrible it's like john wick went back there without the over the topness so to speak with the punching and stuff um but of course the character himself there is some very over the top bits i don't know how this character survived like four of the attempts on his life in this movie i don't want to spoil it but there's a bit involving a where he's being hung and then there's a plane at the end and it's you do scratch your head and go i think those bits might have been a bit too much but <laughs> um they were really good fun actually um the film itself it was really good fun um i don't know if it's one i'll go back to often probably not but i i had a i had a fun enough time with this one i'm gonna give it a six and a half out of ten then we have the haunting remake i watched the original last month so it's time to do the remake and yeah this was terrible um liam neeson uh gives one of his worst performances of his career he could tell this was a cash grab um he was probably thinking oh it's okay i've got the phantom menace to ride on this year as well and <laughs> well um <laughs> um and then owen wilson um was wow the amount of wows he let out in this film was absolutely like it was incredible to be honest how many wows he let out um and it was so obvious what was going to happen to his character. And I absolutely died laughing at the end of it. Um, the worst offence that this film has is that it's a horror. And it's meant to be a haunted house. Um, and I, I wasn't scared once. I didn't jump once. I didn't feel any tension. It was all so poorly done. The ending of the film is pretty nonsensical. Um, and yeah, everything about it. The, the, the house, they didn't shoot. It's like the, the director didn't bother to shoot this film that like we don't want to make this look scary no let's just have it all lit really bright um terrible um i'll give it a two and a half out of ten i thought it's a really bad movie um 
Then we have My Own Private Idaho, starring Keanu Reeves and um, River Phoenix. And um, yeah, River Phoenix is incredible in this film. Really, really good. And it's a really different role for Keanu as well, um, seeing these two play these types of characters. And I really love the first half of this movie, um, where you can see these two just doing their day-to-day -day stuff. And then you sort of find out that Keanu is from a very rich background, but they're in this very poor, homeless environment. And the film escalates from there and it goes in some really interesting directions. But it does go down of quite a few paths. There are a lot of things going on in this film where we dive into Keanu's story and then uh, River Phoenix's dad and stuff. And I think in the end, a lot of the plots become a little bit um, jumbled up in the middle act. And then the ending has to try and resolve them all. Um, but the film starts really well and I think it ends pretty strongly as well. I think just in the middle there, it gets a little bit messy. But I still had a good time with it. I'm going to give this film 7.5 out of 10. Okay, let's have a quick drink. Ah, lovely stuff. Right, next up we have The Bohemian Girl, the other Lauren Hardy film. This one I found really interesting. Hardy basically gets an adopted daughter. And there's a lot of great interactions between all three of them. Of course, uh, Laurel is the uncle. <laughs> um, and there's some really funny interactions with it. I also love the interactions that Hardy has before um, he gets his adopted daughter in the first half with his missus. Because it's, it's really a film of two halves, you know. Um, you spend the first half with Hardy and his missus. And then the back half with him and his adopted daughter. And there's a lot of good interactions. And again, they're sort of like travellers, gypsies. And again, that gives a lot of room for them to improvise with the comedy there. A lot more than it did with Blockheads, for example. Um, and yeah, I, I, I laughed out loud a, a number of times during this one. I thought it was really funny. Um, really well done movie. I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. I very much enjoyed that one. Okay, then we got Transformers Rise of the Beasts. I don't think I actually reviewed this one here on the channel. Um, Transformers Rise of the Beasts, you know, if people don't know what to expect for Transformers now, um, then I wonder how much attention they've been paying to the six films that have come before. <laughs> um, you're not going to get a masterpiece. They are switch-off blockbusters. And you either get a good one like Bumblebee, you'll get a uh, alright one like Transformers 3, or you're going to get a that was unwatchably bad Transformers The Last Night. Thankfully, I'd say this one leans somewhere between Bumblebee and Transformers 3. It was it was good. It was fine. Um, I think I might have been a bit too kind in my review on Letterboxd, because obviously I just reviewed it as I come out of the cinema. But um, yeah, I thought the new human character, the lead, was quite good. Um, the, the female character in it seemed very false, very pointless. And while they went on the journey with the Transformers, that felt very pointless as well. I'll say this. It made sense why Hayley Steinfeld was there in Bumblebee. It made sense why Sam Witwicky was there in the originals. Um, this one, it felt very forced to why the humans were there. Uh, the Transformers themselves, um, they were cool. The fights were really fun. A lot of the humour doesn't work. Um, it works a lot better than that Michael Bay humour, but you can tell they still tried to go back to that humour a bit, and it just doesn't work at all. Um, yeah, the ending was fun. There's a little bit of a cliffhanger, which made me laugh. Um, I thought it was fine. It's one of the better Transformers films, to be honest. Um, but yeah, it was it was fine. The beasts themselves, like the dinosaurs in Age of Extinction, not in it much, but hey ho, we roll. Um, yeah, I'll give it a six and a half out of ten. You know, I had fun with it. It's dumb, switch off popcorn stuff, um, but it's fine. Um, then we have Crank. This is one of my friend Reese. If you're watching, he recommended Crank to me. We're talking about Jason Statham, I think, because of the Expendables 4 trailer. And he said, if you haven't watched Crank, you got to do it. It's about a man whose heartbeat can't go lower than a certain um, point. So he, has to, he just keeps basically doing cocaine to get his heartbeat up. And there's people chasing him, trying to kill him. And that is the best way I can describe that film, at least. And the film is just mental. It feels like you're on cocaine watching it. <laughs> um it is so fun and jason statham's great i i really like jason statham he's one of the saving graces of the fast and furious films that he's in um i love him in the expendable films he's in i quite like his transport in movies as well um i i think he's a really fun action hero to watch and um here it's nothing different he's so much fun in this um he, he made me laugh out loud so many times uh especially in the back half the stuff of his girlfriend um, he actually killed me. Um, 
yeah, I, I, the, I don't know where to watch the second one, to be honest. I know there is a second one, but it isn't on anything. So, But Crank 1, I, I, I thought it was good. 7 out of 10. Then we have Snow White and the Huntsman. These films come on Netflix, and I thought, let's give them a watch, because I love the cast of both. The cast's, you know, the, I mean, the, the second film actually adds a couple other big cast members, which shocks me, because honestly, after watching the first one here... Um, I thought I thought it was pretty dreadful to be honest. This film, um, Snow White. So like Kristen Stewart's great actress. I really rate her after seeing like Spencer. She was great in that. But here she does not suit Snow White at all. She's just so moody. Um, her acting, it's like she didn't want to be there. Um, I thought that. Um, I, I can't think of her name. The actress who plays the villain in it. Um, I thought that she was pretty bad in this film. She doesn't suit the Wicked Witch at all. But then again, she'll probably be better than Gal Gadot. Um, yeah, she, she, she was just very um, uninteresting. She looked bored in the movie. Chris Hemsworth, this is sort of up his street, isn't it? Um, generic movies. Um, but he was actually okay in this one, to be fair. He was fine. Uh, the film itself, though, all the seven, the seven Dwarf stuff sucked. It was all just so moody and boring. I didn't care about what was going on. It got to the final fight scene. Now, this, these moments where Snow White gave this speech, it was like, it was meant to be a fist bump moment, like, yeah, let's charge, let's go get the enemy. It was like, I don't care. That was cringe more than anything. Um, it's a really bad movie. I'll say this visually, though, the visuals were great. That's about it. Um, I'm going to give this film, like, three and a half out of ten. Uh, that might even be a bit kind. I just thought it was actually really quite bad. Um, then we have Spring Breakers, which was one of the first A24 films. <laughs> what the fuck was this? It was such a mess of a movie. So it starts out, you've got um, Vanessa Hudson, Selena Gomez, and a couple other actresses. They were on this girls' holiday, spring break, spring break holiday. Um, and then they don't want to go home. They're having such a great time, you know, and they, they stay out there and they meet James Franco's character who ends up getting them into trouble. But the thing with this movie is the ones that it focuses on, your main characters drop out halfway through the movie. I don't want to spoil who that is, but you spend so much time getting to know one character and then they drop out halfway through the movie and go. And then you, you sort of get to know another character and then they drop out and go. And the whole time you're sitting there going, who is the main character? And it, you also do sort of go, this all feels very pointless and very, like, it's not going anywhere. And it doesn't make sense why these things are happening. Um, it's a pretty messy movie. Um, James Franco is not good in the film. I don't think many of them are. I like the neon look of it and stuff. You know, I've been on um, a couple of lads' holidays when I was younger as well, and it, it very much did capture the feel of what these places are like. Um, but that's about it. Honestly, I thought it was kind of a bad movie. Um, I'm going to give it a 4 out of 10. Probably maybe a little bit too kind there as well. I don't know. Then we have The Huntsman Winter's War. Here's the other one. Um, yeah, this was somehow worse. I watched this because Emily Blunt's here. Um, I love Emily Blunt. I think she's fantastic. I really don't know why she picked this movie. Um, it's quite baffling to me. Maybe she was contracted that she had to do it. Um, because I know that she's spoken about like being forced to do Gulliver's Travels because it was in her contract. And she likes picking movies that she actually enjoys the script of. And I'm feeling like this must have been another one that was in her contract. Like, you, If you want to make this movie, you also have to do this one for us. Um, because the script in this one was diabolical. Um, Jessica Chastain's in it as well. Jessica Chastain's such a weird actress. Sometimes she's amazing and sometimes she's really awful. Dark Phoenix. Um, it, and here she's really awful again. She's really bad in this film. Emily Blunt is good, but yeah, she's you know, her character sucks. Her dialogue sucks. Um, the the witch is barely in this one. I don't know why she's all over the posters. Snow White's not even in this one, which is laughable. Half the Seven Dwarfs aren't in this one. Um, Chris Hemsworth is doing that thing which I hate Chris Hemsworth doing now. Is he, in the first film he was so serious, and in this one he adopts some of that Thor humour because apparently that's what everyone wants from Chris Hemsworth now. He can't do serious performances anymore. Um, and yeah, he's really bad in this one to be honest, like annoying. Um, yeah, and even the visuals seem a bit worse. I don't know. I just really didn't like this film. I thought it was terrible. Two out of ten. Then we got The Flash. I reviewed this one here in detail on the channel. And I can tell you now, I dislike it more than I did when I first saw it. Um, it's just such a mess of a movie. 
um the visuals for a start suck the plot is stupid like this is i don't know loads about flashpoint but this is like the worst adaptation i've ever heard of flashpoint um why is this so batman heavy michael keaton feels so forced in sorry to the michael keaton fans but stop being biased he wasn't great in the movie not not him as an actor the character he barely served any any purpose and what they did with his character at the end i pissed myself laughing i thought how embarrassing um and yeah the ending was just awful um i i really don't like much about this film the more i think about it i think it's really terrible um the thing i was excited to see was ben affleck's batman because i actually like him and i knew that it would be like a send-off at the start to him but his suit looked garbage um all the cameos were just kind of bad um yeah i'm gonna give this a four out of ten it's dropped a lot in my book um it's a bad movie then we have extraction two back to chris hemsworth i'm gonna stick out for chris hemsworth a bit after what i just said he actually is still serious in this movie i was a bit scared because in extraction one he was very serious i was a bit scared that he'd go back to being silly again in this one and look they're, they're pulling shit out of their asses in this film of like um how he survived the last film and stuff and look it's fine i don't care i don't care that much about extraction and they keep doing that one shot gimmick for a few things. And it looks really cool. Um, but I had a lot of fun with this film. I really like the team in this one that he builds. And I was really rooting for them. And I was getting really nervous when it looked like a couple of them might die. Um, and I really enjoyed the end of this film. I thought it had a great conclusion. It was just a little bit too long. And there were some moments where Chris Hemsworth would hide behind a ladder for cover. And it was like, what the hell? Um, but I, I actually had a good time with this. I thought it was actually decently fun i'm gonna give it a six and a half out of ten then we have hannibal finally watched the sequel to silence of the lamb directed by ridley scott i was expecting great things and what i got was an okay movie um yeah i thought the addition of gary oldman in this one was brilliant he was the best part even though you can't tell it's gary oldman obviously he's under so much makeup but he's brilliant in the film I thought the Julia Moore, um, she wasn't as good as Bob in the first film, but she still put in a very solid performance, um, and she she brought some um, interest in life into that character. But yeah, again, just not enough Hannibal action. Um, you know, Anthony Hopkins is so good in this role. Um, yeah, it was it was okay. It was fine. I expected more because it was Ridley Scott. But then again, Ridley Scott can make some nap movies every now and then. Um, I'll give it a six and a half out of ten. Okay, I'm going to have a quick drink, actually, um, because my throat's going. How many more films? We've got about six films to go here, I think. Next up, we have my only Clint Eastwood film of the, year, of the month, but it was a brilliant one. One of my favourites, actually. A perfect world. Um, this film was so good. Um, I can't think of his name. The other guy in it. <laughs> I'm trying to reuse my brain. I can't use it. Anyway, the other guy in the film, um, whose name I should know because he's a brilliant actor and I've seen quite a few things of him in it. I'm just having a brain fart at the minute. I thought he was absolutely fantastic in the movie. He was great. He stole the show. His he, the, the relationship between him and the kid was so interesting, how you could tell he cared for this kid and the kid also was growing to care for him, even though the kid knew he was a horrible person. And that relationship was so interesting to me. Um, Clint Eastwood's... Um, the character was really cool as well. He wasn't in it much, but I don't think he needed to be. Obviously, his relationship with Laura Dern's character was cool. I liked the bit where she was in the trailer and that guy was being really weird to her and Clint Eastwood come in. Um, some really cool moments there. The final moments of the film as well, you knew it was all going to go wrong and it was just the build-up to get there. And the, the directing by Clint was just fantastic in this film. I actually really loved um, A Perfect World. I thought it was really, really great stuff. Um, I'm going to give this film an 8.5 out of 10. I really like this one. And we have Sanctuary. I'm going to be honest, this one isn't out in the UK. It's got no release date. It's not scheduled to come out anywhere in the UK. Um, so I've done a bit of a naughty on this one. Um, but it stars Margaret Qualley. And um, I, I, I really like her. She tends to pick some really interesting roles. And I saw the trailer for this and I thought that looks really, really interesting. So I was really excited to watch it. Um... First off, it's more or less a one set in location. I love that kind of stuff. I think the director's done a brilliant job of it. And the lighting as well. Incredible. But the best thing for me in this one is the dialogue. The dialogue was so intensely great because it's very much a play on power. And 
showing what a the, the woman in this scenario does with all this power and then it will occasionally flip to the man and it was just a really interesting bounce of of, of dynamics there between the pair of them and i think both actors have done a brilliant job playing that off there's a lot of really interesting themes in this one and um, the more you think about it i think the more you'll you'll come to appreciate the film i think there's some really pretty brilliant stuff in this one um i'm gonna give it an eight out of ten it was a really good film then we have vanilla sky um tom cruise to be honest i knew nothing about this film um i just thought it's tom cruise i'm gonna just watch tom cruise shoot some people and that was not what i got at all um this felt like a black mirror movie the whole time i'm constantly going what's in the dream what isn't the dream what's real what isn't and i love that i love movies that make you think like that and his relationship with other characters that you wanted to work out but then you knew they weren't and it, it was just fascinating his relationship with his best friend um, what was happening with him and his company. There was just so many interesting moments. And Tom Cruise gives such a brilliant performance in this one. I thought Penelope Cruz was great in it as well. Cameron Diaz um, gives one of her better performances as well. There was just so many good things in this movie. And by the end of it, I, I, I was kind of glad it was over in a way. Because I was like, it's making me think too much. Um, <laughs> or making me just question myself too much. Uh, but I thought this was really good. Another really good Tom Cruise film. Um, 8 out of 10. Then we have And Then There Were None. The original from 1944-45. Um, it's my favourite Agatha Christie story that I know of. I don't know all her stories, obviously. Um, and I watched the 2015 miniseries when it aired. Um, which had a lot of great actors in. Sam Neill, Charles Dance, um, Toby Stevens. There was a lot of good actors in it. Um, and I loved it. I really enjoyed it when it aired. And they have never put it out on Blu-ray in the UK. Um, but I thought, you know, I'm going to watch the original. And I really liked this film. I thought it was really good. Um, I just love this story. I think it's fascinating to try to find out who the killer is. Um, even though I, I knew who it was. But I love seeing the characters try to guess it. And I think that this is some of the best character work I've seen for a murder mystery thing. I know that Inspector Poivre is not in this film, but I would really like to see Kenneth Branagh maybe have a go at adapting this as a part of his Agatha Christie uh, stories. Maybe he could rewrite it and put Inspector Poivre, Poirot, Poirot, I can never pronounce it, put him in it. I know that might make the Agatha Christie fa fans mad, but I think that'd be really cool myself. Um, yeah, I'm going to give this film 7.5 out of 10. I thought it was really good. Asteroid City is next uh, from Mr. Wes Anderson. I love Wes Anderson. He really is one of my favourite filmmakers. I admire him so much. One of my favourite films of all time is Grand Budapest Hotel. Not far behind that is Fantastic Mr. Fox. And then not far behind that is Life Aquatic and Moonrise Kingdom and Royal Tenenbaums. The man makes fantastic films. And this one here is the most Wes Anderson-y he's ever been. Which is really disappointing in a way. Because this film here, I think the general would have done so well with the general public. Because of the cast and how well received the trailers have been for this pick it's got like the most views for him it's a bright colorful um movie and i think if if this had that more grand budapest approach where it's like yes it's weird it's got that wes anderson style but there's some fun energy to it i think the general audience would have lapped it up it would have been a lot of people's introduction into going back to other wes anderson films but unfortunately it's so wes anderson-y um that, like people walked out my screening they, honestly they did when I say people I mean there were like three or four couples that walked out and I don't blame them because this Wes Anderson's style is not for everyone I love it I really enjoyed it and I I like this film a fair bit um but it's not for everyone and I think you missed a bit of an opportunity there with this cast um but yeah I, the film itself I thought it was good I loved the Wes Anderson style the vibrant colors is great I thought all the actors did a good job, but the interactions between characters was a bit stale, I thought. It seemed to always be the same characters interacting with the same characters. There wasn't many crossing paths. And they were always in the very, very similar scenes. It's like there was a couple that were just always um, engaging across windows. I'm not going to say who, I don't want to spoil it, but, you know, across windows. There was, a, there was another group of characters which were always sitting at the same bench and, you know, blah, 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 blah. It just seemed like it was... It felt a bit stale at times, the film, um, which is a real shame. Um, but I did say I did like it. There were some really cool elements. There's a scene involving a spaceship, and that's all I'm going to say, and that was brilliant. Um, I quite like the end of the movie, and there's some good music in it. 
And I love that style. It feels like a breath of fresh air compared to a lot of other films that come out today. But it was a tad disappointing. Um, I'm going to give it a 7 out of 10. And then finally, I reviewed this one here in detail on the channel as well. So I'll be quick. Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny. I pretty much still feel the same on it, to be honest. Um, it's closer to Crystal Skull than it is the original three, which is a shame. But I think it's better than Crystal Skull. I, I did have a lot of fun with it. I thought Harrison Ford was very good in the role. Phoebe Waller-Bridge, I quite like her as an actress. I really didn't find her that annoying. Um, if anything, the kid was the annoying one in this. Um, Mads Mikkelsen was a really good villain. And what happens at the end, it goes for it. It goes balls to the wall. But, you know, this is like the third or fourth time Indiana Jones has done this. So, again, didn't really care. Uh, uh, you know what? The more it sat with me, the more I don't mind it. So, yeah, um, I'll give that a 7 out of 10. I think I've dropped my score a little bit there, I'll admit. Um, but I still do very much enjoy the film. And I'll be getting it on 4K. Um, anyway, it's time for me to pick my film of the month. And um, I want to say a perfect world, to be honest. I really like that. But, you know, Across the Spider-Verse was damn perfection. Um, I've got no complaints with this movie. It is a perfect film for me, um, which is rare that, like, I think 2015, I gave, or 14, I gave Grand Budapest Hotel a perfect score. And it was 2018 with Spider-Verse, last year with Everything Everywhere, now this year with Across the Spider-Verse. So it's very rare I give out perfect scores, to be honest. Oh, I think I gave the Batman one eventually last year as well, um, because I've really just come to adore that film as well. Um, so it is quite rare I give out perfect scores to films today um but i think i really feel like across spider verse is perfect i've got absolutely no problems with it so yeah anyway there we go guys i hope you've enjoyed this video as always don't forget to hit that subscribe button um don't forget to leave a message um like the video what have i missing message like subscribe <laughs> um thank you so much for watching as always guys um and yeah i'll catch you next time for another video bye bye